SvelteKit 1.0 just officially launched last week. So let's celebrate by talking about two of the conventions in SvelteKit that have changed the most in the last couple of months, and that is routing and loaders. What's up, everyone? My name is James Quick, and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. And easily one of my favorite topics and my favorite framework is SvelteKit. Now, SvelteKit has gone through a lot of pretty in-depth changes over the past couple of months, and I know the changes kind of freaked people out. So there's this new folder-based structure with the naming convention of like the files and loaders have to be named a certain way, et cetera. And I've gotten questions over and over again about content, about how to work with that. So that's what we're gonna work with today, a SvelteKit application, and that's gonna pull in data from Storyblock. So Storyblock is a headless CMS, it is really, really nice. The UI is really nice. And it has this amazing editing feature where you can connect your site to your Storyblock dashboard and edit in real time and see exactly what it's going to look like. So if you want to follow along with this demo, Brad Garapi, a good friend of mine, is helping build some of these demos. So there's a repository and inside of there, there's the Storyblock that speakers demo. We'll talk more about this demo throughout, but you can follow along there. And then on the readme, he has instructions to follow along. So I've got open a regular SvelteKit application. And if we go to the speakers page, this is what is actually built. So it's pulling in data from, from Storyblock and then displaying it. But if we go to the homepage, we can just see the basic stuff that SvelteKit gives us. Now let's talk a little bit about folder-based routing. So you can see an example in here under the routes directory, instead of having a speakers.svelte, for example, we have a speakers folder, which then has a page.svelte and a page.ts. Let's actually take a look at doing this ourselves. So if we do about here and then have a plus page dot svelte, this is going to get picked up as an about page automatically. So we can actually navigate to the about page now and you can see that page. Now, if we wanted some sort of data to be associated with this page, we could create what's called a loader. And this would be a page dot, in this case, TS file. So we're using TypeScript in this demo instead of JavaScript. I'm a huge fan of TypeScript, so that's what I typically do. But inside of a loader, you can actually load data that gets sent down to the uh, page that you're loading data for. So if I just grab an example in here and I say uh, the data that we're going to return is going to have a property of name with a value of James, uh, and then we'll uh, return that. So this is going to load data. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is going to run on the server and on the client. So it's going to run once on the server and then it's going to run on the client after that. So that's pretty neat. So what happens is uh, inside of our about page now, we can create a script tag and we can say lang ts for TypeScript. And then inside of here, we can say export let data and say this is going to come from our page data and it's going to import page data up there from types and these are automatically generated types so what's really cool about this is now um, i could do data and then dot and i get intellisense for those properties so i could say uh, about and then i could say data dot name and actually pull in the data from the loader to then be displayed on the page so that's really cool. So we have our folder based structure. We have our regular Svelte component is plus page.svelte for the actual page itself. You can have page.ts or JS for a, uh, a loader. And then you can also have loaders that specifically run on the server. And those would be page.server.ts or JS. So you could differentiate there. So now let's start to look inside of the speakers page uh, to see what we have there. So inside of the page load we're working with storyblock we'll talk about this in a second and we're using the storyblock uh svelte package to get a reference to the storyblock api and now grab all the data associated with our speaker's story so let's go inside of storyblock now and actually see what this content looks like so inside of our block content or our block library you can think of these as kind of components as they would be inside of svelte or any other language or any other framework and so inside of here, we have a speaker component, which has basic properties of name, title, text, company, an image, um, whether or not they're a keynote, because I want to highlight my talk as a keynote in this demo, obviously. And then a link in this case, which is to Twitter. And then we have another block content, which is speakers. And this thing is basically just a list of speakers. So it has a title in here, and it also has a series of blocks or an array of blocks, which are speakers. 
Now you might be wondering where I got all of the speaker data. This is actually from that conference, not this conference, but that conference. That's the name of it. This will be in January in Round Rock, Texas, outside of Austin. And I'll be speaking and giving a keynote actually at this conference. It's one of my favorite conferences that I've ever been to in the past. Highly recommend you checking it out. Uh, so I'll be giving a keynote on the morning of the 17th. So you can come check that out. We'll also be recording live episodes of the Compressed FM podcast. And there'll be a ton of people there that I'm excited to meet that I think will be worth you coming and meeting as well. So check out that conference. It's in Texas in January. It's going to be a ton of fun. All right. And then inside of content, we can create uh, our stories, which are you can think of as pages. So the speaker's page is going to basically get, get translated with a slug of slash speakers. And then inside of here, you can see all the data. So here's the title. And then here are all the different speakers that are inside of here. So if we wanted to create another speaker, uh, we could say this is going to be a speaker and we could go in and add all the names. So for mine, ex for example, it's James Quick, Content Creator, uh, Learn, Build, Teach, LLC, Image, Am I a Keynote, which I am, and then Twitter handle. So I'm actually not going to use that one. I'm going to get rid of that speaker. That was just to kind of show you how that worked. But there is all the data associated with these speakers. So inside of SvelteKit, we reference the Storyblock API to query, in this case, basically a page and get all the content associated with that page. So for that story, we get the content, which is, in this case, has a property of speakers. And then in the demo, if you look, we uh, differentiate between, where's this tab? We differentiate between, let's go to the speakers page. We differentiate between this, the keynote speaker and the rest of the speakers, as I think it should be. So to do that, um, this code is going through and it's getting a reference to keynote speakers and then the regular speakers. And it's doing this with an array reduce. So we pass it an empty object to start with those two properties. And then we just add on to those two properties of this accumulator object. And then we return that data. So then inside of the speakers page, the Svelte component, you can see we do the same thing we just looked at, which is to export data that matches the page data property. And now we're gonna get IntelliSense based on those types. So you can see here, we have a display of grid for each of these different uh, speakers. So for the keynote speakers and then the regular speakers. Now on the keynote speakers, it's got a grid column of one. That means it'll just kind of sit on a row by itself. But for the rest of the speakers, we have grid columns four and then two and then one based on the screen size. So you can see this is gonna be nice and responsive and go down to one column, but the keynote still has that tag and is a little bit bigger here. So it's got some nice specific tiles or tiles styles for this keynote. So that is really nice. Uh, inside of the speaker component, you can see we export the speaker. We could create TypeScript types for this if we wanted to, but then we do basic Svelte syntax. So if conditional, so if the keynote, if the speaker is a keynote, add the little red tag. Now this is all using Tailwind CSS, which is my favorite way to do styles. So this is already configured with Tailwind. I'll have a link to the uh, instructions for this in the uh, description below. So you can go and set it up yourself, but if you come with this or start with this application, you'll have it already configured. So we add the little keynote tag. We have a couple of different styles. So we change the size of the image, for example, if it's a keynote. So cool use in here of the uh, ES6 template literals to inject uh, kind of JavaScript logic in there. And then for, for this image, we grab from the image property, we grab the file name. So if we look inside of this image address, this is going to be an image address for the image inside of Storyblock. So it's actually pulling that data. This is one of my favorite images, by the way. I'm in love with this. Uh, it's what, what I'm using on all my different platforms now. Uh, so then we have reference to the speaker name, the, uh, the title of the company, and then we have an if condition to uh, display the Twitter URL. And we could add other uh, properties as well, not just Twitter, but for here we have, uh, we have Twitter. So again, all this data is be being pulled down from, uh, from this speaker section inside of this page inside of Storyblock. Now here's a really cool thing, is you can actually connect Storyblock as a visual editor to your application so that not only can you edit data, but you can see exactly what it's gonna render like inside of here. This is like one of the most mind blowing things. So I can change the URL. I've already set this in one of my settings to reference HTTPS 5173. Now, 
It's important to know that this is HTTPS and this is configured by, let's see if we go down to the instructions that Brad has in here. So inside of the, the documentation that Brad has for the repo, you can see that he had inserted the Vite plugin MK cert and then configured it. This is what allows us to reference this project at a HTTPS URL. So instead of HTTP, which then allows Storyblock to connect to it and then show all this data live and edit it, which is really, really sick. I think this is super cool, which means if I come in and change uh, content creator and founder, for example, and save this, notice that that automatically refreshes. So I'm able to see all of my content right inside of here as I'm editing it as well. Really, really, really unique, neat stuff. So in this case, what we've talked about is specifically two different features inside of SvelteKit that have changed recently, which are the folder-based structure, as well as the loading syntax or structure for that. So folder-based structure says create a, a plus page.svelte for the actual page component. You can have loaders at page plus page ts or page js. You can have a loader that only runs on the server if you have specific API credentials that it need to be a secret that are plus page.server.ts. You can also have grouped layouts with a plus layout dot svelte. It's a little weird. I think at first it seems a little unnatural, but I think the more you use it, you're really, you'll really enjoy it. So thanks to Storyblock for sponsoring the video. Congratulations to Svelte Kit on going 1.0. This is amazing. I'm super excited about it. Thanks to Brad Garpy for helping build the demo. So you should go and check him out on the GitHub repo and then on his YouTube page at Brad Garapy. And let me know what other SvelteKit topics you would like to see and what we could potentially build using Storyblock as well. Cause I'll be doing a few more videos over the, over the course of the next couple of months with Storyblock and I'm super excited to dig into that. So let me know if you have any thoughts on what you'd like to see us build either with SvelteKit or specifically with Storyblock and maybe something like Astro, et cetera. So let me know what you think in the comments below, but thanks for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.